Chariyaji, there is a friend of mine in Sweden who is now watching us live and she requested yesterday that I ask a question. I wonder if I can do that. Her name is Dalinda and um, the question very briefly, I will read it out. Dear Acharyaji, um, I, I will quote it. Um, she works in a university in Sweden in a research position and um, she's saying that the work is meaningless in the sense that uh, she can contribute to society by reducing suffering in the world or doing something meaningful with her knowledge and work. She feels that the jobs out there, other jobs, are not meaningful either, but she is now um, in a stage where it's hard to take um, decision regarding what to do um, and how to contribute. The human being, the person, has to live both in the honest fact and the immense truth. Neither of these are avoidable. Obviously, out of these two, truth is bigger. So fact has to be aligned, oriented in the direction of truth. Life must be lively. It must have a sacred divine purpose. There must be freedom. There must be blissfulness. These are statements in the truth dimension. At the same time, there is the immediate fact of life. And what is the immediate fact of life? That even though there is something within us that wants total freedom, that wants immense love, total lucidity, yet we are little and petty conditioned beings. We fully respect the fact that here we sit, for example, assembled in the service of truth. But we also cannot ignore the fact that this meeting cannot go on forever. The fact is, you will have to get up for food, for your miscellaneous occupations and for many other things. Hmm? The physical, corporal limitations have to be remembered and respected if one is really serious about living truthfully. So while it is wonderful that one wants to have a bigger purpose in life, one must tread very carefully and seriously. Those who are sincere towards truth do not jump abruptly into anything exactly because they are serious. They want to carry on for long. And they very well know that the journey is challenging. And because they know that the journey is challenging, they set themselves up nicely. They prepare themselves up nicely. They don't want to fall off. They don't want to begin and then abort the mission. So they set themselves a gradual pace. 
they are all right with going slow but they are not all right with getting defeated they say that our love for the destination is so deep that the possibility that we might be compelled to quit the destination or quit the journey is just not admissible so your friend must figure out tangible ways instead of a romantic plunge into the unknown she has to ask herself what really are the tolerance limits of her mind body relationships what are her economic compulsions hmm how much really does she need to earn we cannot just kid ourselves by saying that if we devote ourselves to the truth truth will take care of our expenses that won't happen truth has enabled you to take care of your expenses and he won't interfere now all the rights have been given to you all the power vests in you so you take care of your life and living those who make a rush often are also those who very soon get frustrated and disillusioned so be determined be very very practical and realistic and being practical and realistic does not mean that you will not start the journey start the journey on a firm footing often the chief consideration and the chief deterrent is social psychological economic think over these things give them a serious thought one should be very realistic about her endurance limits hmm? it's like starting a big war one does not start a big war in a hurry hmm one mobilizes her resources one tests her strength one builds up her endurance and one displays a lot of patience eager patience impatient patience hmm? patience with eagerness i am very very eager but because i am eager hence i am patient